In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step through the process of setting up the Blackmagic Web Presenter HD and get you ready to stream as soon as possible. The setup process is pretty simple, but I wanted to also give you a couple tips and then show you how we use the web presenter here at our church so you can get the most out of your web presenter. So first off, after powering the unit on and then adding a video input to the SDI in on the back of the web presenter, the next thing that I would do is add the web presenter HD to your network, the same network that is running your switcher and your ATEM software control. For those of you who may not be familiar with this, you can actually plug in the web presenter HD and any of Blackmagic's switchers into a network switch and then any computer that you connect to that network switch can get access to controlling the switcher and then also controlling settings and aspects of the web presenter HD so it's definitely worthwhile to do in case you want that extra control and flexibility from a computer screen rather than having to go through all the menu settings on the front of the web presenter or on your switcher and then lastly just make sure that your HDMI is connected to the monitor out in the back of the web presenter so you can see all the data that it displays and you can monitor your live stream very easily from there then once you have your computer connected to the same network as the web presenter Presenter, you can go and download the web presenter software directly from Blackmagic's website. You can go to blackmagicdesign.com forward slash support. And from this page, you can then download the software to edit settings and control your web presenter from your computer. So once you land on this page, just scroll down to the latest download section and then scroll through this list of software until you get to the most recent web presenter software. And at the time of this recording, this is the most recent software update, Blackmagic Web Presenter 3.0. Then you can download that and go ahead and open it up and install the web presenter application. This is what the application looks like. It might right out of the gate ask you to update the firmware on the web presenter, and I would definitely do that. Make sure the firmware is up to date. And then you can come in here and you can edit your settings. Most of the time, I think the web presenter will actually automatically connect to your computer. It'll see it. But if not, you might have to manually enter in the the IP address of the web presenter. If that's the case, just go to the front menu on your web presenter and go through the settings until you find the IP address of that specific web presenter. And then you can enter that IP address in and be able to connect with that web presenter. But once you've connected your web presenter and updated the firmware, the application screen will look like this and you can come in here and edit your settings. So in the settings, this is what our web presenter looks like and how we're running our settings. We're streaming in 1080p at 24 frames per second and we're streaming to Restream, which is then going out to Facebook and YouTube YouTube, but we're sending it to restream.io first. You can leave the server at auto detect here. Then we have our streaming key from restream. And then under quality, we have streaming high checked off. If our internet was struggling with streaming this, we could drop it down to a medium or low, um, but we've had no problem with streaming on high. So then we've left it at that. And then from here as well, you can actually go on air and off air and you can choose to live stream straight from your computer instead of actually hitting the button on the front of the web presenter. So that's nice to have in case you need that. If I go over to the setup tab here, I can change the name of the web presenter, choose language, also see what software version I'm on. Then here under audio meters, you can actually choose between two different kinds of audio metering on the monitor out. And we've actually just left it on the default option. We haven't changed that at all. You could change it. I don't think there's much of a difference between the two. Um, they're just kind of a different feel depending on what you're looking for. And then under that, we have our network settings here. Uh, you probably can just leave it at DHCP. You probably won't have any problem with that. Um, so you won't have to go in and set a static IP. And then when you're done going with those settings, just hit save and you're good to go. All right, so that pretty much does it. That was just a quick run through of how to set up the Web Presenter HD and get it ready to stream. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and I'll get back with each of you. And if you're looking for more in-depth training specifically for church leaders who want to be effective with digital media, you can click the first link in the description below and check out some of our more in-depth training that we have specifically on how to shoot high quality video for your church, including how to shoot high quality live streams. You can also check out our Pro Presenter 7 Quick Start Guide where you can get up and running with ProPresenter 7 in no time. Anyway, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.